Hello. Our story today is called Sharice's Big Voice, A Native Kid Becomes a Congresswoman. This is a picture of me and my mom, the night I was elected to Congress. When I see this, I think how amazing it is I won. I think how amazing it is I even tried to win. When I was young, I never thought I'd be in Congress and never thought I'd be one of the first Native American women in Congress. During the race, I heard from a lot of doubters. They thought I couldn't win based on what I look like, who I love and where I started. But here's the thing, everyone's path has obstacles, some more than others. Everyone faces challenges and people who doubt them. Sometimes we even doubt ourselves. Everyone's path looks different. Let me tell you a little bit about mine. When I was young, I liked to talk a lot. I still do. I talked to my family, my friends, my friends' families. I talked to neighbors, people shopping in the store, people working in the store. I wanted to know things about people. Like, did they move often? Had they ever seen martial artist Bruce Lee kick through a wall? And did they also hate onions on their pizza? My mom likes to talk too. Watching her, I saw how a good conversation can make people happy. You start as strangers, but then you share ideas and learn about each other. Maybe you learn they've moved four times. They love Bruce Lee. And unlike me, they don't care if their pizza comes with onions. I still care a lot. Sometimes I got in trouble for talking too much. Okay, more than sometimes. My teacher even moved me by her desk, but that didn't stop me. Cherise, she finally said, move out to the hall to finish your work. You can't talk out there. But she was wrong. I just talked to whoever passed by. One day, a boy in my class grew upset. So upset, he bolted out of the classroom. Cherise, my teacher said, can you get him to come back? When I found him outside, I did what I always do. I started talking and then he started talking and I listened. That was all my friend needed. And we went back to class. I was getting better at listening. I learned that listening gives people room to be themselves, to feel angry or sad or happy. I discovered that the best way to learn about people is to listen to them. My friends at school were confused about me because I looked different from them. They always asked, what are you, Sharice? So one day I asked my mom, what am I? You're Native American, my mom said. After she told me that wasn't a nice question to ask people. We are members of the Ho-Chunk Nation, she said. I learned my mom was removed from her family and told to pretend she wasn't Ho-Chunk. Our nation is mostly in Wisconsin, where my aunts and cousins live. We're related to the Winnebago tribe in Nebraska. We used to be all one people, but long ago, the U.S. government forced tribes to move away from their homelands. I also learned we call ourselves people of the big voice, which obviously fits me well. My big voice came in handy every time I started a new school. My mom was in the army for 20 years, so we moved back and forth between Germany, Kansas, and Missouri. At every school, I made friends by talking and listening. I knew a good conversation could break down walls, just like Bruce Lee. Hey, hi. In Germany, a soldier taught me martial arts for free. I wanted to keep taking lessons when we returned home, but my mom couldn't afford them. So I watched Bruce Lee movies all the time. He could do a roundhouse kick, a palm strike, and a flying arm bar. I ran around the house punching and kicking, trying to copy him. While my mom was being strong and fierce at work, I was strong and fierce at home. When I was 13, I went to my mom's work for a special ceremony. She had earned a promotion to a higher level in the Army Sergeant First Class. My mom asked me to pin the special sergeant patch on her uniform. I watched her stand at attention in her Army fatigues, an American flag behind her. I felt so proud. It took years for her to earn the promotion. I know how hard she worked, and I knew I wanted to be like her when I grew up, focused and fierce, confident and kind, a person who serves others. I learned how to work hard by watching my mom. I sold newspaper subscriptions and worked in a pizza restaurant, no onions on mine. Later, I paid for college by working in a fast food restaurant, making burgers, cleaning bathrooms, and calming upset customers. I learned you can't always fix someone's complaint when you're out of mustard, you're out of mustard, but you can listen and you can do something to make them feel better, like maybe free ice cream. In college, I used part of each paycheck for martial arts classes so I could finally learn to fight like Bruce Lee, jujitsu, taekwondo, capiera. I could land a punch and defend against a palm strike, but more importantly, 
I learned that when I worked hard at something, I got better at it, even if I couldn't see it right away. I trained every day for years. Finally, I was ready for my first mixed martial, martial arts fight. I was nervous, but I knew I was prepared. Standing in the ring, I thought about my training, all those hours practicing, and then the bell rang. We met in the middle of the ring, and I pounced on my opponent. In less than a minute, I won my first fight, and with my favorite move, a triangle hold. The crowd cheered. With my arm raised high, I realized it felt good to win, but it felt even better knowing I won because I'd worked so hard. You know how that feels, right? At the same time that I was fighting in the ring, I started a journey with a different kind of battle. I decided to enroll in law school so I could work to make our U.S. laws more just and fair. I didn't know anyone who was both Native American and an attorney. I didn't even know any attorneys. But martial arts taught me not to be afraid of new challenges. A friend told me about a program for Native Americans preparing to be lawyers, and I signed up. It was the first time in my life I'd sat in a classroom surrounded by Native people. It felt powerful. No one in that room asked, Sharice, what are you? Once I had my law degree, I worked for a big law firm, but it didn't feel right. It didn't feel like my path. So I moved to a reservation in South Dakota. I saw that my Native friends there didn't have the kind of opportunity I had in Kansas. So I used my legal skills to help them start businesses. I learned a lot living there and my life is better for it. Working with Native American tribes, I saw that the people who make up the American government don't always see how the laws they make impact the people they represent. I wanted to change that, so I went to work in the White House. There, I saw how laws were made, but I didn't see people who looked like my family. I didn't see people who'd grown up like me. What if that changed, I wondered. What if everyone's voice was heard by the people making our laws? That's when I had a bold, brave idea that would need my big voice, my ability to listen, and my ability to take a punch. Turns out, a lot of punches. Can you guess what I'm talking about? I decided to run for U.S. Congress. Our government needed different voices and more people who would listen. I had doubters, people who didn't think I could win or that I should even run. But do you think I listened to them? In the beginning, the campaign team was small, enough to fit around a kitchen table. But as we walked through the neighborhoods, more people joined us. Our campaign made room for everyone. We listened to everyone, people who couldn't afford to see a doctor, moms whose jobs didn't pay enough to give their kids more opportunities, every child who'd ever been asked, what are you? In our campaign, we listened to every voice. The night of the election, I hoped we would win. I knew how hard everyone had worked on the campaign, and I knew how important it was for their voices to be heard. I watched the election results on TV in a small room with my best friend, my family, my campaign team, and my partner. We laughed, talked, and ate macaroni and cheese. When the results came in, I'd won by a lot. I walked out of the room into a ballroom and saw the smiling faces of all the people who'd helped on the campaign as they cheered and clapped. I climbed onto the stage with my mom, and we lifted our arms. We did it. I felt like everyone, every voice was rising up with me. Growing up, I never would have guessed my path would lead to Congress. I didn't know I would be one of the first Native American women in Congress and the first lesbian representative from Kansas. Everyone's path is different and wherever yours takes you, maybe the lessons I learned can help. Be open to challenges, work hard and you'll find, you'll learn a lot. Listen to people, but not the doubters. Use your big voice to fight for your beliefs and always remember you deserve to be seen and heard. And that is the end of our story today. Thank you so much for joining me.